Hi friends, welcome back to a tutorial. It's been a bit on my channel, but today I have something really fun for you guys. I'm going to be teaching you how to swap heads. Uh, it's a bit of an advanced uh, After Effects tutorial, I would say. So I wouldn't really approach this unless you feel somewhat confident in After Effects, but without further ado, uh, these are the two clips I'll be working with. I have a shot of Reva here from Obi-Wan Kenobi, and then I'm going to be replacing her face with this clip of Rey um, from, you know, The Last Jedi. The first thing I'm going to want to do is we are going to mask around Reva's face and remove her face from that. Oh, and I also forgot to mention, but we'll also be using the Content Aware Fill um, feature in After Effects. For those of you who don't know, Content Aware Fill is also something that's in Photoshop. And it's basically when you cut away a certain area and then you tell Photoshop, or in this case, After Effects, that you want to fill that in to kind of match what's surrounding that area. So it basically just makes it look like a seamless filled in spot um, from whatever you cut out. So I'll just kind of show you. Uh, we're gonna go up here to the pen tool and this is on that clip of Riva and I'm going to click around her face here. Okay, so now we have the mask and if you wanna view that on your layer, just hit M. And what I'm actually gonna do is invert this and then um, make sure yeah, you enable a keyframe for the mask path. And I'm gonna click off this for now. And now we're basically gonna go through the motion of the whole clip and make sure that mask stays on Reva's face. So I'm just gonna do that and I'm gonna speed that up. Okay, so I think we have something kind of all right. Let's just kinda of preview this and I'm gonna lower my quality. So it just makes things easier. Okay, so I think that's maybe okay. So this is the part where we're using uh, Content Aware Fill. So you're just going to go down. Um, you have this masked area. You're going to go to Content Aware Fill, and you can see this gap is showing up there where her face would be. So we're just going to go Generate Fill Layer, and you're going to let this sit and work its magic for a minute. All right, so as you can see, it just filled it in. And I'm going to click off of here. And um, as you can see, let's go to full quality, actually. So in full quality, it doesn't look like there's any lines around it, but when you're viewing it in quarter quality, there's still this weird edge. And if you get this, what we need to do is basically extend the um, uh, the mask area so that we don't have like this cutout and then just some edges right next to it uh, showing. So what I like to do in this case is I click on the original clip where we had the mask and um, I actually make the mask smaller so it kind of is going inward if you think about it, like you're shrinking the full space of the mask. So we're getting more footage. So we'll hide those um, harsh edges. Um, and then if we just click off, those should be gone. Now, if we preview our clip, hopefully we don't have any bits of Reva still in there. Yeah, so as you can see, I mean, obviously you can still tell where her face was, but um, I'd say that did a pretty good job of replacing her face. Um, so, so I'm actually going to um, move down the layer with all the filled in frames. Yours, if you only have a few layers, yours might be right above uh, the clip you're working with. Um, in my case, it was at the top, um, above a lot of stuff. Um, and I'm actually gonna disable that first and I'm gonna duplicate this original clip layer and get rid of the mask just for now. Um, and I'm going to label these for a second. So this is the masked Reva. This is the fill layer. And this is, I'm going to say original clip. So I'm just going to look through this. So basically I'm looking through this because we're going to track the motion of the original clip. And the reason why you need this is because when we have a mask cut out of Ray's face eventually, we need something to track that motion on to um, so that it just goes right along with the clip. It's not uh, bouncy. It, it doesn't look obvious that it wasn't attached to that body in the first place. So we're just going to be tracking movement, but I want to find a spot, um, you know, that really has that. And sometimes the face isn't a good spot to work with because her face could be moving, her eyes could be moving. So I think I might try to actually pull a spot off of the crest on her chest. So 
First things first, I recommend you do these with, the, with null layers so you're not working directly in the clip. You're gonna go new layer and then null object. And I'm gonna just crop this. Then you're gonna click on your clip you wanna track. You're gonna go down to tracker in the side panel, hit track motion. And then I have to zoom in a little bit so I can see where I'm working with. And hmm, we might not have enough to work with as far as that crest. So I'm actually, we'll try tracking, we'll try tracking the corner of our eye. And hopefully, hopefully that's good. We'll have to see, we might have to redo this. And if we do, we'll probably track her nose just cause that might move less than her eyes. But we'll try that for now and make sure you edit the target so that it's on your null layer. And then you can hit the play button to analyze. So it's probably pretty good. I'm gonna hit apply. And then we can, since this is applied to the null layer, we can delete it from the original tracker or the original clip, sorry. We can probably just delete this clip, but for now, just to be safe, I'm just gonna hide it, just undo the eye icon, and I'm gonna re-enable that fill layer, um, and I'm gonna move Mask Reva up. So, this is what we have so far, and now this means we can uh, mask Ray's face and move it over here. So now what we have to do is we have to stabilize Ray's face. And actually this clip is pretty stable. She barely moves really, but um, you can see her whole body kind of moves a little bit to the side. Um, but the way we are going to um, stabilize her so that she doesn't move is we're gonna use Mocha. So you're gonna clip your clip, you're gonna click your clip, excuse me, type in Mocha. And this might not be in older versions of AE, but it is on the current version. And you're gonna just double click Mocha, click on the Mocha plugin and it will start up. All right, you can just close all of this stuff. Uh, show next time. Okay, decide later. All right, so what we're going to do to stabilize this, for now we're just, we're gonna go along and we're actually gonna track her neck area if we can. And that will kind of basically, I think, get rid of the movement um, we're seeing. So I'm just gonna try that. And you wanna disable the skew option, we don't need that. And then make sure you got the beginning of your sequence and you're gonna just hit the track forward button. And it is just going to track along those points. And there we have it. I'm just gonna re-click here and name this neck. That's our layer. I'm gonna hit the save button and then you can just close the window. Then if we go into tracking data, we're gonna want to invert this. You're gonna wanna choose transform for your export option and then you want to choose your uh, ray layer, but I'm gonna rename this so that I know for sure what this is, ray. And again, layer export to ray. And then we can hit create track data and make sure you select the layer that you named. So now, let's see, is that really? Oh, sorry. We hit create data, we have to apply it. Sorry about that. So now this should be applied. You might be seeing some funky like movement of the edges of the black bars on the clip, but the bit of Ray's neck is stabilized. It's not moving around and that's what we want. So now that we have this stabilized neck shot of Ray, what we're actually going to do is use the rotoscoping tool to rotoscope Ray's face. It just makes things easier, um, yeah. And I'm actually gonna pre-compose the stabilized clip first. You just do Shift Command C on Mac. Make sure you have this checked. I'm gonna name this Ray Stabilized. And I find it's easier to pre-compose this first and then go into Rotoscope. So go up to the Rotoscope button, click on your layer, zoom out if you have to. And I'm gonna bring the brush size down. And then we're gonna go around Ray's face. And I'm gonna get, make sure I get her face and her ears in, but we don't need the long hair. Um, yeah, it just will make things easier for us. So I think that's pretty good. I might get rid of some of this slightly so we don't have such a harsh edge. All right. And then I'm just gonna kind of see how we look as I go a few frames ahead. And I'm actually just gonna hit the freeze button soon and see how it does.
All right, so it did a pretty good job. Uh, again, I'm gonna hit Command C to save, just to be safe. Then I'm going to go back into our main uh, layer. Make sure you're in the composition aspect. So this looks pretty good um, in our actual settings for uh, the mask, the rotoscope. I'm going to reduce the chatter up 100%. I don't think for now I'm going to use any of the refined edges stuff because she really didn't have any hairs kind of peeking out. But now what we can do is we can bring our composition of her head over. Let's move this back. And so now we're on this layer of Riva. I'm going to flip raise face, which there's not like a flip option in here, which kind of sucks. So I'm just gonna go hit S for scale, unclick this linked icon and do negative 100 in the first box and then relink it and that will just flip it evenly. Then we're gonna hit P for position, kind of move it over. I'm gonna also go back to scale and kind of scale it down a little maybe. And then P, back to moving this around. I think that looks pretty good. So once you get your uh, mask of the person's head in position, you're going to take this little pick whip tool, the parent pick whip, and uh, this just basically, uh, it assigns that clip to do whatever something else does that you pick. So like if I connect this to our null layer that we tracked, it will follow the movement of that null layer. So that's why that's important because now this head is moving along exactly with the body of Riva. So that's essentially how you swap heads in After Effects. Um, for me, when I have these layers all set up and everything, that's when I then pre-compose all this and I'll change the eye colors um, for Ray to look kind of like a Sith, Sith man up of sorts. But um, I'm not going to show the eye transformation just because I have some tutorials already on how to do that. Um, but what I will show you is how to kind of color correct a little bit because obviously the clips look a little different. Um, I like to use curves and I'm just going to drag this onto our head of Ray and color balance and maybe also some hue and saturation. She looks a little saturated. And I might actually do that first. So that looks a little bit better. Then let's try messing with some curves. Okay. And there's a little bit of blue in the shadow, so I'm going to take that out. Cool. I think that looks a lot better. And we probably don't even need the color balance here, but we can just try messing with that a little bit. Cool. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I might actually pull in some levels and try to adjust the dark levels a little bit. All right, I can be happy with that. So um, yeah, let's just preview how this looks. Alrighty folks, so that is how you swap heads in After Effects. And again, this one might not look perfect just because as I said, um, we tracked her eye movement and the eye uh, still might move around a bit. So uh, if you have something that's more solid, like a mark on a piece of clothing or a sigil or something, um, and there's a better spot to track, I would recommend using that instead. But I still think you get pretty good results from this. And then um, from here on out, you can edit further if you wanna change eye colors. Um, add any marks or anything. Mocha uh, AE is also really good for that, for tracking parts of faces and adding some other effects. Um, there are great tutorials here on YouTube for that. 
Uh, but yeah, otherwise, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you found this helpful and not too confusing. Uh, and I can't wait to see what people make. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.